he just asked me if I wanted to check out a cave in a sewer. So I went. How long had you known this guy before he asked you if you wanted to check out a cave in a sewer with him? Four months. That's a good enough amount of time before you yeah. go into a cave with them. Oh, yeah. Dude, last year there was a Esquitarian themed party in like an old bootlegging cave. Call from Shabo. Hello? Yo, is this Lyle? Yeah, who is this? This is Sabo. Sabo. What kind of name is Sabo? Yeah. Is that I assume that's not your real name. No, it's not my real name. It's my explorer name. Like what what how what do you explore? Uh you know, like the sewers and old caves and abandoned buildings, that kind of thing. Um how long have you been exploring sewers for? Uh, probably like a couple of years now. Yeah. Uh, I just, I got into it because one day I showed up to work. Um, I used to work at a tropical fish store and, uh, it was a really slow day and my coworkers showed up high and I was just like chill with it. It was whatever. Uh, and then at the very end of the shift, he just asked me if I wanted to go check out, uh, check out a cave in a sewer and I had nothing better to do. So. I went. How long had you known this guy before he asked you if you wanted to check out a cave in a sewer with him? Um, I want to say only like four months. That's a good enough amount of time to know somebody before you go into a cave with them. Tell me about Cave Guy. Cave Guy? Well... There are multiple cave guys. There are a lot of cave guys. But you, you want to know about the cave guy? I want to know. Uh, when I say cave guy, I mean the guy who took you to a cave. Okay. Yeah, so he, I don't know. He was just another, I mean, he was my age. And he, I guess he'd been doing it since he was, like, young, like 13. Which seems kind of like, where was his parents? But, you know, hey, man, he, he can do him. Um no, he was cool. I don't know. We just worked at a dingy tropical fish store together, and like occasionally we would like smoke weed before and after work. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. He was, he was chill. I, I, I love him. He was a great guy. That, he moved out to Florida, but that really does have to be one of the best jobs ever. Just it was pretty good, honestly. Getting high in a store that nobody goes into ever that's almost certainly a front for something else and then afterward and then you meet cool guys who take you into caves that's so that's a sick job that's a sick job sorry someone was knocking on my door um no it was a fucking awesome job uh like it was I, just, I mean i love fish tanks i'm surrounded by pretty fish you know it's like dimly lit all the tanks are like super old. It, it it did look like a front. Like it had the building had no windows. Everybody I talked to thought it was a front. I even had people come in like and ask me if I sold drugs like late at night because they thought it was a front for like fucking drug smuggling. It was fucking stupid. How how many times per shift would, would a customer come in? Oh, I mean like during the weekdays, like only like four or five honestly on the weekends it could get pretty busy i mean there's a lot of people who got who got fish they got to take care of you know but during the weekdays it was pretty dead bro i really think about this stuff all the time like you know what uh can i ask what city this fish store is in uh yeah minneapolis okay i mean because I, I always wonder, like, okay, there's certain, like, to keep a business open costs a lot of money every month, right? And it's mm-hmm. like, there's a certain amount of um, a tropical fish that you need to sell to, like, break even. And then you got to sell, like, double that to actually make any money. So how the fuck does this fish store afford to stay open? Um, by the owner is a total cheapskate. He like, he paid me like less than minimum wage. And then he also like genuinely talked about me to me 
uh, about how like he didn't believe minimum wage should be a thing. He was like, he was like, I should be able to negotiate, you know, my wages with my prospective employees, you know, as you know, as he was paying me, like, listen, I'm gonna, what's your name again? Sabo. Sabo, I'm, look, I'm all for workers' rights and minimum wage, okay? Mm. But, um, it, it sounds like you got paid about as much as you should to get high and look at fish all day. No, I didn't just get high and look at fish all day, dude. I was like cleaning the tanks and stuff like that. I'm just like, I mean, and, like, on busy days, like, I was selling, like, thousands of dollars worth of, like, fish tanks and stuff like that. So, like, How much I don't is know. a fish? I thought I was... Well, I mean, it depends on the fish. You know, there are some fish that are only, like, $2 a piece. But then there were several fish that were, like, three or $400, you know? It really depended on the, the kind of fish. Um, do you still work at this place? Oh no 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 no! That was, Do that you was still? But but your love for um, exploring abandoned stuff carried over. Mm-hmm. Yes, and yeah, you still it was explore really abandoned funny sewers. Yeah, no, I still explore abandoned sewers, and it was really funny because like, so I I don't work there anymore. I have a different job, and then at my next job there was another guy who was like even more into exploring than the first guy who then showed me a bunch of more stuff. And like, dude, he took me to like, like underground festivals, right? Like there's like a whole week long thing in Minneapolis where like people come from all over the country just to explore our, our like tunnels and stuff. It's pretty crazy. Oh, that is pretty cool. Um, what's, what's the festival called? It's called Mauser week. Mauser Week. Tell me about Mauser Week. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's pretty simple, honestly. Yeah, it's just a bunch of people from all around the country, even the world, um, who just enjoy like urban exploring, and so they come to come to Minneapolis for a week, and uh, we just have throw big like cave parties and stuff like that, and explore together, and um, just have a good time in general. Anything crazy ever go down at these cave parties? Oh, yeah. Dude, last year there was a Prohibition Esquitarian themed party in like an old bootlegging cave. And uh, there was like a projector with a silent movie. There was like a whole ass horse skeleton. Um, There was like an art gallery. Uh, There was a barter blackjack. There was a full cocktail bar. Be like, People like tapped into the street lamps nearby and like ran power into the cave, so it was fully lit up, and we even had internet. Um, and then like there was performances, there was like fire dancers and like music, and then there was a sewer ballet where um, there was like the pure surface dwellers versus like the the dirty sewer people, and they like got into a battle, but then by the end they like became friends and were dancing in a circle. And then there was like an offering to the sewer goddess where people just, you know, left gifts in order to have good luck and not get lost in the tunnels. It was a, uh, it was pretty wild. It was a good time. Does it, does it smell? In the sewers, it definitely can. Sometimes it's, it's really nasty, honestly. Um, thankfully, I'm like partially nose blind, so I don't mind it as much, but it's, it's, it's really gross. Like I don't. I don't really uh, enjoy being in the sewers that much, but I go into the sewers because they're connected to other things. You, you know, go you into go the, the sewers, sewers to get to cool because the hottest parties in Minneapolis are going on down there. Yes, one hundred percent. There's like huge raves that happen down there and stuff like that. It's it's pretty wild. That's cool, man. That's cool. How often do you go into these sewer raves? Uh, I don't go to the sewer raves that often because I'm, I mean, I'm not a huge party person a lot of the time. Uh, I'll go for like a special occasions, but they happen pretty often. Like there's probably one going down during certain times of the year. There's probably one going down like every weekend. Dude, I absolutely need to do um, one of my gecko interview things at the sewer party. People are going to think I'm cosplaying as a Ninja Turtle. 
You should, dude. Honestly, like, if you ever came to the Twin Cities, I could probably, like, set it up where we could get internet into a cave. And we could genuinely, you could have a show in a cave. All right, I'm in. I'm, I, I, think, if you wanted. I think I'm going to Minneapolis on, on my uh, uh, tour next year, so I'm, I'm in. I'm in Seriously? for a sore party. Yeah, I think so. I'm trying to. Well, what happened last year was I went to Indianapolis, and I thought that that was, mm. I thought that Indianapolis and Minneapolis were the same thing because, you know, they both have Panap- Panapolis in it. <laughs> you're kind of um, goofy for that. What, uh, uh, what do you do now? That you're not work that you're not getting high and looking at fish. Uh, I'm a locksmith, which is kind oh, okay. of ironic because sometimes I go to explore things. I have to like trespass, you know. But hey, it's not do people's f- homes, so. Mm-hmm. As a locksmith, do you like? C- can you theoretically break into anybody's house? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not, like, I'm not that, I, it's funny, I'm not actually that good at, like, lock picking. Like, it's a really small part of my job is, like, lock manipulation. But, like, I know the weak points in a lock and could get in within, like, probably a minute or less. Mm. Um. Do you foresee a universe where you ever use this skill for evil, like, to steal chickens from a coop or something um i mean i feel like if it was like life or death i probably would but i don't know i i I try to i try to be a good boy you know where have you broken into but i mean like i don't know i wouldn't say i've like broken in but like i you know to get into the sewers, you have to like pop a manhole in the middle of the street. And, you know, I've also been inside of like abandoned mills and stuff like that. Um, and there's like, I've sometimes you have to go through like rail yards and stuff like that to get into some of these spots. Um, you know, there's bulls after you. I don't know if you know what bulls are in rail lingo, but um, yeah, no, it's just a. Uh, Sometimes you gotta sneak around people to get to the cool spots. What are bulls? They're just like the the security guards of like rail yards, you know. Uh, mm. I think the reason they're called bulls is because hobos always had to run from them back in the day, you know, when they were trying wait, to hop now, a train. Now, um, rail lingo. Let me hear some more rail lingo. I don't. I'm not as deep into the the, the train hopping community as I would like to be. I don't know more rail lingo, I guess. What's your, like, uh, what's your name again? Sabo? Sabo, yeah, you can call me Sabo. Sabo, what's your prerogative, Sabo? What, what do you, what do you dream of at night? What's the future look like for Sabo? You can go anywhere, you can, there is literally, there is literally no place off limits to you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I have, yeah. I have places I'd like to go. Um, I mean, there's a there, I've heard from like friends about like tunnels in other cities. Like, there's some really crazy tunnels in Chicago and stuff like that. That'd be cool to check out. Um, I'd also really like to. It'd be really, really, really sick to break into like the um, the like Chernobyl exclusion zone in mm. Ukraine. That would be sick. But obviously, there's a war going on in there right now so i I can't even get close to that but um i mean like are are you asking like as far as like just dreams in general like what do i want to do with my life kind of deal or just just like where do i go uh i don't know i kind of honestly i I hope my my life ends up like kind of like simple like i'd really like to just like make enough to be comfortable um, have a significant other, you know, like have a nice house with a, with a big garden and a, you know, a deciduous lawn and just like go to work and not be stressed out. I'm not, I don't really have like big aspirations. I just kind of want to like be comfy, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's good that you have an inexpensive hobby because some people's hobby, as you know, is, um, buying exotic fish. Yeah. 
I mean, I still do that sometimes too, but not as much as I used to. Um, yeah. I have a question for you before we go. Do you have any yeah. safety concerns at all for for urban exploration? Because, um, you know, I by the way, I myself, I I, uh, I don't do it that much anymore. But I used to, uh, like, when I was a kid, be really into like you know exploring abandoned buildings and basements and, mm. and all that kind of shit but um i know that that uh like you can you can get a little fucked up whether it's like asbestos is running around or like a, a tile breaks off and and you fall down three stories or you know you ever mm. run into anything like that oh yeah no i actually i almost uh i almost killed my best friend while we were exploring once because uh there's this one storm drain that we like to go into and in order to get in you have to go to the spot that's called confuser and the reason it's called confuser is because there's like seven manholes in close proximity and only one of them has a ladder but it's like a really visible spot so you have to like open the right one and get in quick otherwise you'll get caught um and so we went there and i opened the wrong one and so my friend like started getting down in and he, he you know was uh hanging onto the edge with his like arms and he was like, I can't feel the ladder. I can't feel the ladder. And I was like, shoot, we got to like turn on a light and just like figure this out. And, you know, there was just like a 12 story drop beneath him. Um, so we had to like pull him out. That wasn't fun. I really, I felt really bad for that. Um, so you got to worry about stuff like that, you know. Um, and uh, I've also gotten like really sick from the sewers. I, I was bedridden for three days because I like basically got dysentery. So that kind of sucked. Um, yeah, and there's asbestos and, you know, there's HS gas in the sewers, which can kill you. Um, and, you know, if you get cuts and they get infected, that's not good either. So, yeah, it's it's really dangerous. Um, but uh, I don't know. I kind of like the danger. Maybe I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie in that way. You're like a ninja turtle. Yeah. Running around in sewers, turtle power. Um, yeah, man, it sounds like you were playing like uh, manhole Russian roulette, pretty much. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, and I'm really lucky I didn't kill my best friend. I would have done that; would have ruined my life. I think if that had happened. Well, Sabo. Thanks for talking to me about. It. Thanks for op- you know you know what is cool about this conversation is um, God doesn't uh, I don't know if the, the the folks at home can empathize with this but uh, God doesn't life feel boring sometimes you know don't you feel don't you do you ever feel like uh, ah you already know all the stuff that exists out in the universe for you to do and um, you just you're just bored I'm glad I got to talk to you today because. Um, uh, any any day where I, I gain knowledge of a, of a new thing that exists out in the universe, such as underground sewer parties, I gather a little bit more of my lust for life. So um, thanks for sharing all this stuff, Sabo. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Uh, Mauser's got a mouse. Turtle power. Turtle power. Have a good night, Kek. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? My name is Ben. Ben. What's up, yeah. man? That's uh, Gecko. This is Gecko. Uh, what's up? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, what's up? Uh, uh, yeah. That, well, we might speak about what I texted you before. Yeah. So. I haven't worked in three years. I'm paid by my uh, company insurance because I uh, went into depression, like a deep fucking depression, and uh, I got like I I get panic attacks and anxiety a lot about like every fucking thing that exists. So, and I got to go back to work in like three weeks. So you, uh, your insur, your your, did you get like panic attacks uh, as a result of your work? 
At the start, yeah, 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 yeah. Back then, well, when I went into depression three years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I worked like for the government and I sell alcohol for the government where I live. So it's you sell like al- uh, you, you sell alcohol for the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like and it's you a are job, it's like, uh, you're in Montreal, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. That's why you got the little, that's that's why you got the French thing going on. Yeah, that's why. That's why. I was I because I, I saw the I saw the plus one I saw the Canada area code by you yeah. and then you started talking and I was like this is a very funny sounding Canadian man but you're French um, yeah I am French yeah it's uh, like it's like, it's like, like the, the actual like the you know it's a, the fun part of Canada now why did selling alcohol for the government send you into a depression. Uh, it was because of COVID and, you know, like the laws here, like in the, the restrictions were like, uh, I didn't mind them that much, but they were like pretty heavy. And, um, but uh, like everything was closed, but like the, those, the, the, like the liquor stores, they were still open though. Cause you know, we, we were making money for the government and also we're selling like, it's a drug, you know, it's alcohol. So, and, uh, so you, you cannot stop selling this because people are just gonna fucking break the windows and just go crazy. Every 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 place that where they like the end every place where they did close the liquor stores, they all got robbed. So, anyways, so that's why we kept on working and uh, like my what, what, my job pretty much changed into like I became like a bouncer, you know, because like only ten people could be in the store at the same time and. Uh, uh, you know, was that uh, like I used to be like working in 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 a warehouse, and now I had to be like up front with fucking crazy people wanting their uh, alcohol and just like being aggressive, and you know, like you know, it was a, sh- a shitty time. So this was what sent me to depression, and then um, since I was depressed, like. You, you, you know, you, you, you would think that you, you're sad when you're depressed, but it's not the main thing. You're mostly like, like, angry, you know. And so I was angry, and I stayed at my place. I wasn't getting out. So, and that's when I started uh, de- uh, developing panic attacks because, uh, like, if you spend like six months in the same room, and then a year in the same room, and a year and a half, and two years, and now it's been three years. I've been in my living room. Uh, yeah. So now, like things get th- things get like it's like the world has shrunk, you know. And everything that's outside of my living room is uh, like it's it's aggressing me, you know. What kinds of things are aggressing you? Like everything that can be like a. a, a Everything that is like stimulating, like birds chirping, or uh, like yeah. you know, it, it snowed. It snowed last week here, like a shit, a shit yeah. ton of snow, and yeah. they had to uh, plow it away. And like every sound and every you know, like yeah. it, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Everything that I cannot control, everything that I cannot control is aggressing. And I think that that's 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 a thing. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, you know, you I, into, I, yeah. 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 You go out into the world. The birds are chirping. There's fucking noises and people talking it's it's annoying it's annoying being yeah, outside and, yeah and my place is like super calm so like, you also you mentioned in the text also that in okay so let your story as it stands to me is you were working selling alcohol for the government in canada because they have weird laws uh this put you in a position where there was just a bunch of fucking crazy people around you all the time this drove you kind of insane and because it drove you insane you were able to collect a bunch of money on insurance and uh with that money you've been able to stay home for three years and you mentioned in the text i believe you said that you haven't left the house in like two or three years is that correct yeah almost i like uh, i go out maybe once every two or three weeks Sometimes I go to the uh, corner store to buy some rolling papers, but uh, that's about it. I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes when I first went into a depression. I, I, I like I hadn't smoked for like ten years, and I started smoking again. Of course, you know, because you're on depression, so might as well fucking smoke tobacco. And uh, are, are you? Yeah. Um, would you consider yourself agoraphobic? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and my doctor, my doctor also has, 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 has spoke to me about uh, having problems with this, and spoke. I I spoke about it with my. Um, I, I I've actually been referred to a psychiatrist. I'm going to see one in um, January. Uh, Great. It's going to be like the second time I see one. Great. First time I saw one, he, he just like told me like, "Well, you got depression, so take care of your depression." And come back to see, to see me. So I, I thought it was a a bit like rough from this honest part there, but uh, he was he was right. You know, might as well uh, like take care of one sickness and so, the rest. But, um, okay, so I mean, if we let, so let's get into it for a little bit. What what? Yeah. For these these three years that you've just been yeah. at home and you haven't been yeah. working, do you live alone? Yeah. What have you been I doing for these three years, man? I taught myself how to program. Oh, okay. How to code. That's okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool, that's man. I'm sorry. You... That, 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 that's the only thing. I, uh, the, for, for the first six months, I did nothing. Like, I stared at my, at my ceiling. And I did. Uh, for, 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 uh, after a year and a half, I mean, I couldn't get out of my uh, apartment. Because I would get like too tired, you know. I couldn't get into my um, uh, like walk from my uh, kitchen to my uh, living room, and I would be like exhausted just by doing this, you know, because I was so not doing nothing. So uh, this also this also helped into the, the anxiety and feeling unsafe outside, you know. But uh, yeah, that's mostly what I did for three years. I just like plugged myself on the computer and uh, didn't get out of my house. And I, you know, you know what what I like. I, I've only this like I've known Twitch, but I've only started uh, watching Twitch for like a month. So, and, uh, um, so, so Ben, uh, what yeah. have you been like? Th- have you, are you able to like? Is is what have you been programming? What have you been coding? What have you been making with this new skill that you learned? Um, I code in like you know I don't like you know programming languages, but I code in C. So I taught myself how to code in C, so it's like pretty low level stuff. Like, okay, like you know what I like. I I I had some like little gigs left and right, like on Fiverr and Upwork and these kinds of uh, stuff for like because because I can do web also. But for like the thing I like the most is C programming, you know, because it's low level stuff. So it's like I program like like uh, it's mostly for uh, my portfolio, like. So I can get a job maybe in that area instead of working where I like because I, I I fucking hate my job. Uh, so yeah yeah yeah. So I've been mostly programming like stuff like you know memory management stuff and like uh, file systems and uh, mini OS uh, operating systems like so you know like just like low stuff low level stuff like just Ben do you yeah. do you do you do you get lonely at all in, in just being at your house and not not talking to anyone? I speak to people like every day, but like only on the internet, on the internet or on. Uh, right. I am fo- I, I am fucking lonely. Well, I, there, have, you, there is a, a problem. You, you have in, uh, you have you have like internet friends. No, I got real friends. Uh, but you speak to them. No, 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 no real, actual real friends that I do see. But I, I, I speak. Uh, most of my interactions with them are still on the internet because it's it's you know it's. Mm. Everyday living, but they actually live live in Montreal. They live like uh, two mm-hmm. streets away from me, or so. Mm-hmm. So we do. I do see people once mm-hmm. in a blue moon, but I mostly speak to them on the. But but you still do get lonely though, because it's it's not the same as as, as, as uh, uh, and there there is a a loneliness problem with uh, uh, I don't know North American men for sure. Uh, I don't, I know there there's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you also you said in the text that you're going back to work on January. Yeah, three I assume, weeks. in in person at the liquor store. Fuck yeah! How do you feel yeah. about that? I'm freaking out. So here's the I'm thing, though, is out. so I know you're freaking out, but um, well, a couple things, and I'm just like, just totally like practical shit is like. You've been spending the past three. You're you're smart. You're really smart. You spent these past three years 
um, not you didn't just sit around and jack off all day. I mean, I'm sure you did a little bit, but you learned. Well, a you skill. know what? You know what? <laughs> Hold on! Don't tell, don't tell me what you're about to tell me just yet. <laughs> hey, got y'all fight. What, what were we gonna say? Well, the thing is that I just want to say something about depression and, and taking antidepressants. You know, because I took a lot of them. I I'm still taking a shitload they, of them. Are you about to but say that first, they make your dick not work? No, 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 no. At first, it, it, it fucking worked. It works. But you fucking can't come. Like, you don't get to the end. Right. Like, you just fucking right. can't get to the orgasm. So, right. like, if so it's thinking, very possible it's that you were just... Yeah, it's very possible that you were just uh, in the same masturbation session for three years. And then eventually, <laughs> you know, you just come a whole bathtub at the end. But... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 but, yeah. but what I was going to say, what I was going to say is, you know, you were smart. You learned a skill over the past three years, and so, um, you know, my uh, my friend, I, I I I wonder why is it that you are? Why have you resigned yourself to? Okay, I now have to go back to this fucking horrible job, as if, as if, um, a as if there's only one job available for you to do in the entire, uh, you know country of Canada and then be as if you didn't just spend a whole bunch of time learning a new marketable skill like why have you put yourself in this box where the only thing for you to do to make money now is this is this horrible job that you hate I know I I, I think it's because I like like it makes it makes when I look at it from the outside it makes absolute sense for me to See what path I should take, and like most probably will succeed in. But to actually do it, or to act, like everything is still uh, creating, yeah, like everything is still um, creating a lot of anxiety in me. So, yeah, yeah, that's the main, that's the main, main thing, and. Uh, I need to fucking take a shitload of Xanax just so I don't freak out most of the time. So at least at my government jump, you know, I can be Xanax out of my head and scan bottles at the cash, you know, and okay. ask for twenty dollars and just give the fucking money back. And okay. you know, it's a basic job. Let me it's, let me ask Ben. Let me ask you another thing. Let me ask you another thing. Through your insurance, uh, yeah. over the past three years, have you been able to talk to a therapist? You said you spoke to a doctor who. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I've been a psychologist for four years. Okay. Tell me, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. curious. I want, I want to know what, what are some things that the psychologist have, has told you? Uh, well, we spent a shitload of time in, in, in my, my childhood. Uh, I had, uh, 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 you know, uh, Tourette syndrome. Tourette's, when I was a yeah, kid. Tourette syndrome. Yeah. By the way, uh, a very, uh, it's almost apt for you because. Tourette sounds like a very French. It sounds like a French. Yeah, syndrome. we think Tourette. Tourette. You know, I was gonna yes. say Tourette, but you know, I, I said it in English just because it sounds so cooler. Oh, uh, that's that's the main reason. It's so what is your so cooler, uh, what what is your uh, what is your psychologist told you that has been helpful for you in, in dealing uh, with all this? That has been helpful. I, uh, I, it's not, I don't know, man, because we've only been exploring, like, deep in my past, but, like, she hasn't really told me anything that much about, like, actual daily. Yeah. Like, actual. Yeah, dude, I trip, fucking hate. You know? No, I, I know what you mean. I fucking hate, that, like, uh, I've I've been, you know, like, I fucking hate in therapy where they're like, tell me about when you were eight years old. I'm like, first of all, I don't remember. And second of all, I'm a hundred, whatever. Okay, look, I know I'm not a real therapist. I don't know. I didn't read any of the books or whatever. But I'm like a hundred percent sure that nothing happened to me when I was eight. That is the reason why I, um, you know, am addicted to candy or whatever the fuck. But I'm also probably wrong <laughs> and stupid. But, but, um, but no, I understand your frustration about that. So, yeah. so okay, but so I, nobody, but, but nobody, no, no psychologist. So, so no, no psychologist, no doctor. I mean, the, what about the doctor? Like, has any, has any mental health or physical health professional given you any po tips or positive ways forward to deal with the things that you're dealing with? 
Yeah, I got a doctor, and uh, he, he he prescribed me pills. So it's pills and therapy with the psychologist, but that's mainly... You know, they, they say you get access to, uh, like, psychology resources and all this, but, like, it's, it's hard to actually get good psychology treatments. I don't know. Uh, it's like... Sometimes you you, uh, you feel like they don't even know what to fucking do with you. So, sure. Like 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 the, like the the woman a woman called me this week like for an interview like not an interview but like there, there, there's like a screening call before the psychiatrist and she asked me like that bun- a bunch of questions and uh, like she asked me what I, what I what I'm expecting out of the psychiatrist you know like. How am I fucking supposed to know what to expect from a psychiatrist? I mean, he's a psychiatrist. That's psych- a legit, I, mean, I, I hold on. I think that's a legitimate question. What are you expecting out of a psychiatrist? Well, I, I, I answered. Well, I just wish wishes like uh, I just wish he op- opens up my head and repairs it. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I told her. Yeah, because I fucking yeah. don't know what what what, yeah. what I, I, like just just fucking crack me open and fix it up. You know? Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, but I couldn't. I I know it's it's like a shitty answer, but I mean I, I have no words. That's I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a shitty answer. Like, I think I mean look, it, uh, people go to school and the the job exists to do that. Yeah, right? the job exists because really? people have fucking issues and they got to go to yeah. a, a person to help them with the fucking issues. So, uh, okay, and this was the previous intake. So did you go to see the psychiatrist? No, no. no well, well, I'm gonna see it. Um, in January, most probably. She, she right, told cool. me it's going to take like three or four weeks. Well, yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. So, so, it's, it's, uh, well, yeah, listen, it's, you know, Ben, it's, it's, I, um, you know, I'm not a real thing. I'm a fucking douche in a in a in a shitty costume that I've been farting no, in but a it, lot but it, but it, on the phone. You're right though. Now. Um, but I, I want to say, I want to reiterate what I was saying to you, and I understand that, like, you know, you, you have a, uh, you're just going through this shit that makes it hard to, like, take action and not, like, catastrophize everything that's going on with you in your life. But I really do, like, from an outside, if it's, if it's meaningful to you at all, from an outsider perspective, I think what you did was really smart. You learned a skill that you could now use to go apply I'm sure that you have a computer screen with like 15 different fucking monitors on it that you can do a whole bunch of jobs from. So why don't you go on the internet and find uh, uh, jobs or, or, you know, I know you talked about Fiverr, you talked about Upwork. Those are all great things. I, I'm sure you made a profile and you did this and you offered whatever services that you can provide with the knowledge that you learned over the past three years. But, like, why don't you go within your means of whatever you can do while while navigating whatever's going on with your mental health right now, like, see what options out there exist for you in the world before, you know, succumbing to this this defeat that the only thing that you can ever do with your life ever is get, you know, yelled at by drunk French Canadian people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for your advice, man. Okay, good. Thanks. Do you do? You, does that? Do you feel? How do you feel about everything I just said? I feel. Uh, I feel fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. No, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, man. Of course, it makes sense what you were saying, but I mean, it's not something that's like so. Yeah, it's it's good to you know when because when you speak when, when you fail, like when you say things like they make sense as you say them sometimes. So just, mm-hmm. just like just talking with you, like I realize some things. So okay, good. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, but, okay, but you good. know what though, uh, um, it, it's the first time I call, and I like I've known you for known you for like only two or three weeks. Uh, but like I watch your show every time I can, and you're a fucking great. Um, you're an inspiration, actually. Thanks, but, uh, man. Uh, Thank uh, you. And, and I, I want to say, um, I'm going to call you back, man. I'm going to text okay. you back once. Uh, okay, once, good. Uh, once I, I'm, I'm down for, for I'm down for a follow up. If you go, if you find another job, let me. If you find another job or something happens, yeah, I'm, yeah, or, that's, it, that's it. Yeah. Okay, you call me back. Let's talk. I want to know okay. if there's an update. Okay. Perfect, man. Have All nice right. evening. Thanks. Ben, is there anything else? Oh, okay. Is there anything else you want to say to the people no, no, on the no, computer before we go? All right, all right. Take no, care, no, man. but I know. Uh, well, just, just be careful. You know, uh, God. You know, maybe it doesn't exist. 
Who knows? That's it. All right. Take care, Ben. Thank you. Bye. I got to go to Montreal at some point. And... So wait, the government runs liquor stores? That's kind of interesting. I liked Ben. He was a cool guy. I don't know. I um. He's smart though. Like I said, he's smart because I I've talked to, we've talked to like, uh, you know, mildly agoraphobic people on the um, on the podcast before, and like obviously people in like crazy like depressive episodes, and um, you know, look for me when I'm in a, a crazy depressive episode, I don't uh, learn how to code. I you know, uh go insane i don't do anything productive but he did something productive with his crazy time he turned crazy time into crunch time that was smart and i hope it pays off for him call from Ruby. hello yo what's up man what's up Gek? is this a scooby yes sir uh what's going on scooby how can i help you today uh, nothing much, man. I was going to talk about my experience in uh, foster care for the past 10 years. Oh, wow. Um, how old are you now? Um, 18. Oh, man. So you got put there when you were eight? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Start, start wherever you want to start. All right. So pretty much, um, I used to live with my dad and uh, he used to get into arguments and shit with my stepmom. Then uh, I think Child Protective Services came in the picture, do like welfare checks. They came up to my dad while he was smoking a joint. And then um, fucking, they didn't take me to my grandparents' crib and they took me to uh, a shelter. And I started going to group homes and then uh, throughout those, that's when I started getting arrested and shit, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Got introduced into some uh, fucked up drugs and shit. Mm. Kind of fucked um, me over in the long run. So, so they they took you away from your parents when you were eight because your dad was smoking a joint, or it was a bunch of other stuff? Yeah, it was uh, mainly because of arguments and shit. It wasn't like a household for a child, but the joint really had the cherry on top when they showed up. So, did uh, did you feel that way? Did you feel like it was a bad environment for you? Um, not really. But like nowadays, I don't really be talking to my dad because you know, every time I like I see him, it's always like an argument, or I end up getting arrested due to him like trying to um, aggravate me and just trying to uh, just fuck me. Mm -hmm. So, so where are you at now? Uh, stayed at my FIBO, so I was kept really. Uh, I had a court order recently, like a month ago. I have to go to rehab. For 60 days, so I'm going there on Monday. All right. Um, now, you said that you were into, like, drugs and doing all this uh, other kind of stuff. Is that something you're still into? Um, Honestly, I stopped all the hardcore shit. I've just okay. been doing, like, shrooms and, like, tree recently. All right. Um, are you going to go to college? Uh, yeah, actually, um... I just got to get my GED and then the foster care system pays for my college till I'm 28. Oh, really? That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's dope. They pay for the dormitory. They pay for everything. And um, they pay me to go to school, too. Wow. So you so you don't have to go into any kind of... You don't have to pay a dime? Don't have to pay shit, man. It's all free. Damn. The uh, there's yeah. definitely some 17-year-olds um, who are about to call... So there's definitely some 17 yeah. year olds that are about to uh, listen to this podcast and call social services on their parents. <laughs> For sure. Um, what are you going to study? Um, Most likely like computer engineering. But what I really want to do first is get like some trades in like HVAC, electrical, plumbing, welding. I can th get that shit for free too. So if I don't succeed in college, I also have that to fall back on. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just get my certifications. Are you excited? Um, not really. Cause I have like severe social anxiety. Mm. Um, I don't like talking to people like that. 
Why do you why do you not like talking to people? Due to like trauma and stuff. Like when I was um, a kid, when I was like when I was young, like maybe ten years old in a group home. Like anytime I'll come out because it was like predominantly like you know black kids, staff is black, whatever. I was like the only white boy, and like anytime I spoke, they would just be racial towards me, calling me like a cracker, all that shit. So I just didn't really you know talk to people. Um. To myself. Do you have any friends right now? Oh uh, yeah, I have one good friend of mine that I've been hanging out with since middle school. Okay. Do you, are you are yeah. you um are you close with them still? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, we started talking a lot more after uh, our good friend passed away hmm. a couple of years ago, and because uh, we met up at his funeral and started talking again. We'll get together, and then uh, yeah, still talking to this day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We look out for each other and shit. Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. So, do you uh, do, like now? Are are you are you feeling anxiety about like going into a classroom setting and going to you're going to like traditional college? You're gonna go to like a university where you'll be in a dorm. Uh, and no, I'm doing um. Shit. Yeah, no. So what I'm doing is, uh, I live in South Florida. There's a place called Broward College, like a little community college. I'm gonna go there for two years. So that's like my gateway to go to FSU, uh, Florida State. Rad, dude. Rad. Yeah. I'm trying to think about anything that. Well, I'll, I'll, I mean, let's think. I'll think with you. Is there anything that you think would help you get over your social anxiety? Um, I really don't know because I haven't really tried anything. Okay. And I think uh, smoking, you know, smoking pot doesn't really help either. Okay, so that's what was, another thing I was going to say to you is like, uh, you know, weed affects everyone differently and like, but but here's the thing, both ends of the spectrum I don't think are good, right? Because um, yeah. for me and for a lot of other people, when you smoke a bunch of weed, you get in your head and that's the worst position to be socializing from because you're overthinking everything you're saying you're overthinking everything the other person is saying you're not being oh, yourself sure. you're paranoid you're you're shy you're it's just it's just it's just not good but even if you were to for tell sure. me that but if you were to tell me the opposite even if you were to tell me that we had made you feel more sociable and loose and and whatever that would still be bad because then you would you know develop some kind of system where like oh i have to get high in order to talk to people and that's not good either so um yeah you know i i i, mean, I, I yeah. noticed i noticed that um when i do like mushrooms and shit like it helps me uh like not feel weird like it makes me i don't know it makes me happy and joyful like i can actually talk to somebody okay. having to worry about them judging me and shit how often are you doing mushrooms um i microdose like once every two or three days so I'm just getting back, you know, into the hang of that shit. So, I'm not sure how mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. So I, I assume you've been going to. Well, you're gonna get a rehab for sixty days, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go there for sixty days, uh, starting Monday. So I will be out in March. All right, cool. How are you feeling about that? Um, feeling kind of good. I mean, I told my friends and shit that I talk to still that I'm, I'm you know about to do what my plan is and I told them when I get out I'm planning on being sober cool. uh hopefully I'm not addicted to vapes no more and I don't you know smoke weed no more cool I don't know live the sober cool. life cool man well I good on you you seem like you have a really great uh, perspective of all these things it sounds like um you didn't have like the best positions growing up, but you're making yeah, a, nah. a hell of a lot of it. <laughs> For sure, yeah. See, Child Protective Services really fucked up my childhood, but I made the best of it. Child Protective Services fucked up your childhood? Yeah, that's when they put are you Are you home. more mad at them than at your parents? Uh, Yeah. I mean, no kid wants to... Even though I had a shitty uh, household, I didn't want to get taken away from my dad because... Still, that that is my father. That's my mm -hmm. blood. Yeah, I don't want to sure. like you know 
be raised without him. But um, yeah, no, I didn't live with my family. I was only got to visit them once every week, every two weeks, if I'm lucky, for like an hour for visitation. Mm-hmm. And that was, yeah, since I was eight. Um, you told me this already, but I, I was um, thinking about something else. What are you studying? Or what do you hope uh, to do? Engin- uh, computer engineering and uh, for my HVAC, uh, le- electrical, AC, and plumbing. Cool, and maybe man. some welding. That's sick. That's some good. That I like that. I like anything where you go to school. Like, if someone's going to pay for you to go to school, do please, dear God, do something real. Oh, yeah. I'm know? taking advantage of that shit. <laughs> do something real. <laughs> and I'm not saying, and I've talked about this on the fucking, on here a billion times. I'm not saying that the arts is not real, but like, yeah, but like, it's going to college, paying a bunch, going to college for it is n- is super not real. You know, like if you're going to oh spend all the time and money and effort to go to college, you know, get it in something that you have to go to college for. So, yeah. you know, good on you. Oh, yeah. And they also um, they also cover like apartments like they pay half the rent. So, like, I'll nice, say man. like if uh, it's like 1300, I'll pay like 400 for rent. What, how do they what, what's the whole deal? Is the foster system? Is that like a public tax funded thing? I think so. I mean. I don't really know. I know the they give you benefits for, you know, putting you through a whole bunch of bullshit through childhood to your eighteen. That's like the way of saying, Hey, hey, we're sorry. Here's a uh here's your own crib. You get to go to school for free if you really want to. You know. All these uh free services and shit. I mean, I don't know. And and even if you don't go to school, they give you like almost a fifteen hundred like a month. Just because wow. you were in foster care all those years. It's crazy. That's great. That's great, man. Well, you know, uh, what's your name again? Hold on, don't tell me. I don't rem- I'm going to remember it. Ah, fuck. What's your name again? <laughs> Scooby. Scooby. Okay. Yep. I feel like I should have remembered that. Where'd you get the name yeah. Scooby from? Um, I liked watching Scooby-Doo growing up, and uh, I was like my Discord name and my fucking all my online games growing up. Do you have, is your friend dude. named Shaggy? I had a friend named Shaggy. Yeah, he changed his username to that for uh, Call of Duty memes and shit. You're, uh, you. I think I, I'm not worried about you, Scooby. I think uh, I think you're gonna do well. You got a good head on your shoulders. Keep uh, keep doing Appreciate what you're doing it, and trying to stay sober and trying to you know live life well. For sure. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, hope all y'all have a good day or good night. Sleep well. Gek bless you. All right, man. Have a great day. Or night. Take care, man. All right, man. I liked Scooby. I was thinking when we were on the phone. I was like, "Am I?" And I'm too. I'm too. I'm too deep in the game for these uh, questions. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. But I, I'm talking to Scooby, and I'm like, "Am I?" Is it bad that I'm? I just pretend to be a therapist that I we're doing fake therapy stuff, and I think about it. Um, but I liked I liked talking to Scooby. That was an engaging conversation. It felt helpful for everyone involved. You know, I I I though I enjoyed that fake therapy session. Um, so whatever, I'll keep doing fake therapy until, um. You know, something really bad happens. All right. Thank you for calling, Scooby.